I do get a lot of people telling me, you need to listen to this speaker. It may be that speaker, it may be that speaker, or another speaker. But one of the speakers that comes up the most is the Tribit Max Sound Plus. Now, I'm not saying it's just come out and I found something absolutely new. It's been reviewed many times already. But it does seem to be one of the best bang for bucks speakers in terms of anecdotally what's coming back to me. You know, it's, we're talking about 50 pound. Now, I'm gonna compare it with the Denon 250BT, the Flip 5, because they're probably the nearest in terms of form factor. 50 quid, the Denon about 160, 170 pound, about 120 pound, the Flip 5. So you could say not really a fair comparison. The point being, it's the nearest in size to the Flip 5. I think it's still gonna be one of the speakers you may be humming and hiring this, that, you know, which one should I get? And the Denon, just because, you know, it's slightly bigger and it'll give you a good handle on just where we are with the Tribet. Just how good is it? Or is it really okay at 50 quid, but you know, you can't compare to the more expensive speakers. It's not really been something to interest me, mainly because I do like to pair my speakers in stereo. And while you can do double up, you can do party mode with two Tribit Max Sound Pluses, you cannot do stereo. So that to me was, mm, ugh, put me off a little bit. And of course, do we really need it? Well, probably, I still don't need it. However, it did interest me because, you know, the number of comments I'm getting, you know, you need to try it. And look, it's not an expensive speaker to get and try. So just to quickly go over, as I'm comparing it with these two, the specs and how they differ. Massive difference between the Flip 5 and the Denon and the Tribit, of course, is no auxiliary input on the Flip 5. So you're never gonna get a firmware upgrade that's gonna allow you to use an input because there is no auxiliary input on the Flip 5. You do get that on the Tribit Max Sound Plus on the little flappy thing at the back. And indeed you get one on the Denon. I will say, one of the things that maybe belies the fact that it is, you know, at the end of the day, a budget speaker, it's a two volt, but 1.5 amp charging input. So not even a two amp there. So one of the things that may already be suggesting, yeah, it's still going to be a budget speaker. Now, in terms of drivers, we've got that one racetrack mono driver on the Flip 5. We have two woofers on the Denon and a, a large passive radiator on the back. We've got two 45 millimeter drivers on the tri-bit and a passive radiator front and back. There's a little grill there for the passive radiator. Now, battery size, battery capacity, I'm gonna say it's a 7.4 volt battery because it's a two cell obviously in series on the tri-bit. So 7.4 volts, I think it's 7.2 volts on the Denon and I believe 3.7 volts on the Flip 5. Now I'm saying this because when comparing batteries it's important to know the voltage. Normally, if it doesn't say the voltage, it's 3.7 volts. Once you've got a 7.2 volt, 7.4 volt battery, to compare them, you need to be quoting 3.7 volt equivalents. In other words, you're multiplying it by the actual voltage divided by 3.7 times the actual battery capacity to get the equivalent. It, because it obviously, it would be best if they all quoted watt hours, you know exactly where you are, but they don't. So. Quoted 4,800 milliamp hours for the Flip 5. I'm assuming it's 3.7 volts because I haven't quoted anything. I could have done some research. I'm sure I could have found out. But off the top of my head, as I sat down, I didn't know whether it was or not. So 4,800 milliamp hours capacity JBL Flip 5. 4,400 milliamp hours, 3.7 volt equivalent. 5,837 milliamp hours, 3.7 volt equivalent on the Denon. In terms of codex, it is SBC only for the Tribit. It is SBC also for the Flip 5, even though it's twice the price. So you could say, oh, okay, it's SBC, it's all we're getting is budget, but even the Flip 5 only has SBC, but it's AAC, APTX on the Denon. So really you're getting a sense of, you know, what you're paying for, or even though it is obviously a larger speaker anyway, things that you're paying for, Already, that's something you're paying for, APTX. A little bit more in terms of the codec being used. Having said that, 4.1 uh, Bluetooth version on the Denon, 4.2 on both the JBL and the Tribit. As you can see, the Denon is the largest speaker. 
750 grams for the Denon, the Tribit's 595 grams, 540 grams for the JBL Flip 5. So it is the lighter. They really are very, very similar sizes. And I was actually thought that Flip 5 may be a little bit heavier. It's actually slightly lighter than the Tribit. They are all IPX67 rated. Now, you know, it is quite basic. I'm gonna say, oh, it's so basic, there's no app. You know, 50 quid, you don't expect an app to go with your speaker, but there's no app to go with the Denon. And I have to point out, there's a problem with the Denon. Uh, in the, if you leave it on the shelf, it's gonna self-drain within about two weeks. Now, I know that they say there is a way you can turn it off. It'll stop the drain, but I also understand there's a problem in turning it off that way. It's off the top of my head. So I'm not gonna go into, this is the way to turn it off and you won't have that problem because when I remember looking into it, there was a problem. If you turned it off in a certain way that stopped the drain, the, the battery from draining, you do get volume controls and you play pause button on the Tribit Max Sound plus a power button and your X space. Now I'm gonna say the first thing I need to know, or anybody probably needs to know, and I'm sure you probably already know, but however, I'm gonna go as though I'm you know reviewing this from scratch. X space. So what's the difference X space on, X space off? So without extra bass engaged, you can see of the big roll off in bass, 7%, 13%, all the way up the volume scale. There's a roll off in the bass. This is telling me without extra bass on, it's not normal bass, it's a bass cut. It's consistent all the way to our maximum volume. And then we look at extra bass on, now we're getting a bit of a lift at the bass end. So extra bass is really, for me, normal bass, all the way up the volume scale. You will see it tops out at 73%. And from there on, it's increasing the volume above 200 hertz. So extra bass is normal bass. No extra bass is a bass cut. No extra bass on, extra bass on. Not only are you getting a bass cut, you're getting a bit of a lift at the very high end. Extra bass is clearly flatter as you go towards the high end than no extra bass on. 67%. So you've got a nice bass lift and you've got a flatter frequency response with extra bass. No extra bass, extra bass, maximum volume. I guess no extra bass on maybe is like a late night listening mode. You don't want to wake your neighbors. The other thing you can see is, is a remarkably flat frequency response, all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Now that is remarkable. We are talking about 66 hertz to 20 kilohertz within plus or minus three decibels, basically flat. So basically from around here, 66 hertz, it's within plus or minus three decibels all the way along. But that's with extra bass on. It's not flat if you don't have extra bass on. With extra bass on, it's remarkably, remarkably flat, remarkably neutral. So probably a bit of marketing. Ooh, ooh got an X bass button, but actually it's a normal bass. But I guess if you said normal bass button, he's gonna think, <laughs> what's that all about? Turn it off, you're getting a bass cut, but you're getting a brighter sound because it's going a bit higher at the very high end. So what do they sound like? Well, first of all, I'm gonna say the tri-bit plays a little bit quieter than these two speakers. So I'm trying to get the volumes as even as I can without normalizing it. I'm getting fed up normalizing because I th always think it favors the quieter speaker. So I'm not gonna normalize them, but I'm gonna get the volumes as close to each other as possible, which means in this case, I'm playing the Denon and the Flip 5 at 33% volume. I'm playing the tri-bit at 40% volume. Stay. 
So the Tribit playing at 40% volume, the Flip 5, and the Denon playing at 33% volume. The Flip 5 and the Denon do play louder. At these volumes, the Tribit minus 16 decibels at its base peak, 71 hertz. A decibel louder, the Flip 5, while playing 7% lower in terms of volume scale. The Denon over a decibel louder again at that 71 hertz base mark and playing 7% quieter in terms of volume steps than the Tribit but the Tribit does have that very flat frequency response and does extend all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Flip 5 rapidly rolls off around 14,000 hertz and it has these dips as well all along the frequency response. You'll notice the Tribit does not have those dips. It is a lot clearer in terms of its sound signature. It just doesn't have the fuller bass of the Flip 5 because the Flip 5 does have a bit of a boosted upper bass. If you look at around the 100 hertz mark, it's even got a bit more upper bass than the Denon. Now the Denon has more of a rounded bass and a fuller sound, but the Tribit is a third of the price of the Denon. Full retail prices, Tribit one third of the price of a Denon. You can actually get three Tribits for the price of one Denon and two of them for the price of one Flip 5. So this is a really good result for the Tribit given its price point. As I said in my Flip 5 review, I do think the Flip 5 excels at low volume. You know, if you're not looking for a huge, massive sound, but you do like a nice sound at low volume, it's a pretty decent listen. Also, obviously, comes in it, into its own when you play them in stereo. Now, obviously, never to be able to do that with a Tribit. It only supports mighty party mode. But the mono speaker, the Flip 5, you can pair two of them up in stereo. You can also pair two, two of the Denons up in stereo. But it's getting rather expensive when you remember the Tribit is a third of the price. So, quite a smooth sound. The bass is there, but obviously it can't match the other two speakers, but the clarity, it's, I think that's probably what I would say is striking me about this speaker. Extended high end, pretty flat frequency response. It's making the JBL sound dull outside of its bass. Obviously it's got better bass, but it has issues between bass and about 10,000 Hertz where it does have a bit of a, a smiley signature but the Tribit is a much smoother frequency response and it certainly has a lot more clarity. So real word listening volumes for me, you may be different for me, around 60%, but again, again in this case, 53% I'm playing on these two speakers. I'm gonna play the Tribit at 60%. <laughs> Oh, 
So the tri-bit playing at 60% volume, flip five, and the Denon 53% and then the volumes are kind of equally matched. The tri-bit versus the flip five, again, the flip five has all these dips all along the higher end and rolls off rapidly at 14,000 hertz. The tri-bit extending all the way up to 20,000 hertz. It's a very well extended speaker and very clear in terms of actual bass. There isn't the upper bass difference between the flip five and the tri-bit that there was around 33%. And actually the bass peaks are almost the same slightly more for the flip five, but almost nothing in it. And then the Denon, not much louder. In fact, about the same in terms of actual bass peaks, but extending much further in the bass. So if you're looking around 50 Hertz, about minus 32 Denon, seven decibels quieter for the flip five, about 10 decibels quieter for the tri-bit. So the tri-bit doesn't extend quite as much as the flip five or the Denon. The Denon does better, but in terms of actual lower bass extension, does better than the other two speakers, albeit is the more expensive and larger speaker. So when you remember the price level of this speaker, half the price of the Flip 5, third of the price of the Denon, with a full frequency response. No, there's no messing about like you do with the Flip 5, you know, get a, have a bump here, have a dip there, but we'll give you some bass and that'll make up for everything else. It's a smoother listen more relaxed listen it's a detailed listen but still the Denon is the hi-fi speaker here neither of these two can r really match the full sound of the Denon and in fact it's full deeper bass the question is okay then we're going to push them to maximum volume so now all the volumes will be at exactly the same point how do they really match up Maximum volume, the tri-bit, the flip five, the Denon. So they are now all playing maximum volume, which means the same volume steps and at the same volume steps. If you're looking at the bass, so at the bass peaks, at maximum volume, the flip five is just over two decibels louder than the tri-bit, now playing at the same volumes. So two decibels at its bass peak, but as it extends deeper, 70 hertz, 60 hertz, not so much in it at 70 hertz, only a decibel in it. But then again at 60 hertz, four decibels loud for the Flip 5. So, you know, overall Flip 5 does have a thicker, louder bass, but it does have the massive roll off at the high end, as well as all these dips all along. The tri-bit does extend, even at maximum volume, all the way up to 20,000 hertz. At 20,000 hertz, minus 62 is over 20 decibels louder at the high end, and generally louder, it's a still pretty flat frequency response, albeit with a bass cut at maximum volume, 20 decibels more at the high end than the Flip 5 and louder than the Denon. Denon also has quite a roll off as it gets to maximum volume, eight decibels more roll off for the Denon than the cheaper one third of the price tri-bit. So the high end is really where the tri-bit excels in terms of average loudness minus 18.8 over a decibel quieter than the Flip 5. But it's actually a bit louder overall than the Denon. The Denon does not play well at its maximum volumes. Although it does have, obviously, the best bass of the three speakers. 
especially as you go into the lower base, minus 21.5 at the other one's base peak, which is about the same as the Flip 5, but deep base. Minus 27 for the Denon, minus 32, that's five decibels quieter at 60 hertz Flip 5. Minus 36 for the Tribit, that's nine decibels quieter at 60 hertz. Limitations of size and, and budget, the Tribit can't extend that base, but it does have a decent base punch, and it does have excellent clarity all the way up to maximum volume. In terms of absolute instantaneous peaks, the Tribit at maximum volume actually has a higher peak than the Denon. But Flip 5 has the highest peak of all three speakers at 100.3 at one meter, I must say. In terms of maximum volumes, what do those frequency responses actually look like? I just wanted to show you how amazing that tri-bit does extend in the high end, all the way up to 20,000 hertz. You look at the roll-off for the Flip 5 on the brown line here, massive roll-off. Even the Denon is now rolling off. But the tri-bit is the flattest. It just can't match the base of the other two speakers. Its weakest point being around 100 to 200 hertz, or it does have a bigger roll-off, much bigger roll-off than the other two speakers. But at its budget and for its size, it's doing really, really well. The Denon has some severe dips now at maximum volume, which is why it doesn't go quite as loud as a tri-bit, between 1,000 hertz and 3,000 hertz, and then again, all the way up to 10,000 hertz, another dip. But that big peak around 14,000 hertz. The tri-bit, much smoother response. Even the Flip 5, big dip, 5,000 to 10,000 before its little peak at 10,000. So I have to say, yeah, clearly this is a nice budget speaker. It's not like the Anchor Motion Plus where it's a budget speaker that can actually really match much more expensive speakers, um, certainly in terms of loudness. So if you take the overall average loudness, yeah, it is a surprise to me it goes louder than the Denon, but that's because the Denon has the roll off at the high end and there's funny things going on uh, in the mids and stuff at maximum volume, although it does retain a decent amount of bass. But overall, when you take the whole frequency response into consideration, overall it's louder than the Denon. And it maintains that frequency response right up to 20,000 hertz. Now, that, that's remarkable to me. So I mean, that <laughs> kind of knocked me socks off when I found it was doing that. You are ne at, no, at no point are you losing the clarity. Um, you, may, you may find it too bright. Uh, you may find it a bit too thin, but I think it's a nicely balanced sound. If you're not looking for a massive bass, the bass is there. You know, there were times when you would never get a bass like that on even larger speakers. But now, you know, you certainly get the sense of a, a bass slam, bass being there, but it's not a big full bass, but it's certainly there. The bare frequency response, something like was 60 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Pretty amazing, really, for a speaker like that. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna sound hi-fi. Denon is the hi-fi speaker of the bunch. And the Flip 5, look, I still think it's a more rugged form factor. I still like the form factor, but why would you pay twice as much for a Flip 5? Well, because it does have a bit more of a bass. If it's all about listening, which it is for a lot of people, for a bass, you're probably gonna prefer the Flip 5, but it's a better listen, it's a more detailed listen on the Tribit. The problem is you can't get stereo, and if you get a pair of flip fives, given the form factor, you get a pretty, pretty decent sound. It's pretty nice in stereo. In fact, it really comes alive in stereo. So in terms of, is this a great budget speaker? Absolutely. Can make the JBL Flip 5 sound pretty dull once you get over the, the base of the Flip 5. It's detailed, maybe a little thin, but it's smooth. It's not overdone in any place. I mean, to go up to 20,000 hertz and not sound, you know, sibilant, not sound harsh or edgy, it's quite a feat, really. So I'm quite impressed by this speaker. I'm not gonna say, though, it's gonna take over my listening because, you know, the other speakers still sound better overall. But, you know, in terms of bang for buck, it's gonna be close between this and the Anchor Motion Plus, which is the actual best bang for buck speaker, 2009. Um, I would still go with the, the Motion Plus uh, because you've got more headroom and you can play them in stereo. However, you do, you, it rolls off heavy. There's nothing out there that, you know, that I've personally got um, in, you know, in this price range or size that can do what this can do up to 20,000 hertz. That is quite remarkable. So I did enjoy listening to this. I would say, yeah, I would happily recommend this to someone looking for a speaker around that price range, you know, or even up to uh, past the 100 pound mark, up, up to p twice that price. But then you start hitting the Anchor Motion Plus, 
And then I suppose it's going to come down to size. Don't forget, Anchor Motion Plus still has an app. You, you know, you've got more flexibility with the Anchor, but it's about twice the size, isn't it, of the Tribit. So yeah, everybody who said, you need to try this speaker, you was absolutely right. It's a stonking value speaker. Um, and I hope you got something out of my video, albeit it's you know, many months after this speaker came out, so it's probably not going to be a shock to anybody, but I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching. UK.